Greetings friends, we're at the end of the Orcs and Omen season, but Dante has just had some new rules. We covered his rules a couple of weeks ago on the channel, so if you want to check that out, you can. Today I'm going to tell you real quick the list that I'm going to be running. I've been wanting to play Dante for a little while, so we're going to talk about the list, why I think it's strong, and I'm going to build it with you in Battle Scribes. If you've never done that before, it'll be pretty easy to see how to build a list, especially when you go into 10th edition, because Battle Scribe is probably going to be a pretty useful tool. All right, let's get straight into it. So hello, and if we're just meeting, I am John, and this is the Blood Angel Commander channel, where every week we do various videos on how to get the most out of your Blood Angels. So let's talk about Battle Scribe. I mean, load it up, uh, add the Warhammer 40,000 data, and update it. I actually already updated it before we start this video, so we're good to go. We're going to click New or Create Roster. Uh, this is going to be Blood Angels. You don't have to do this, but we will do it. Blood Angels, Arts of Omen. And we're going for 2,000 points, and we will just add our Blood Angels Arts of Omen Detachment. Cool, it's already defaulted, but there is other choices there if you've never used it before. So we add our detachment, very, very simple, and then we choose our battle size. So it's a Strike Force Battle, we're our Blood Angels, and the game type is Arts of Omen. There we go. So that's the basic admin to start the game off. All right, so we can close this. Uh, we can close this. Agents of the Imperium. I do run Agents of the Imperium, and I run a squad of Voids and Arms. I think they're very useful for retrieve battlefield data, or behind enemy lines, or just um, they can be used for engaging all fronts. They can also just be used to hold an objective. So for Voids and Arms, it's 40 points. You're going to get four, like, toughness three, one wound guys with Laz guns, and one with a rotor cannon. These guys typically don't get to shoot, they're here to perform battlefield data. So uh, for 40 points I think you can't go very wrong with them. They are also classified as troops, which means for battlefield data they can always pass on the turn they come in from Deep Strike. Right, or Strategic Reserve, sorry. I know they're going to change everything from Deep Strike, but that is that. So we're going to add Commander Dante and he will be the Warlord. By giving him the Warlord he will give us plus one CP. I'm not going to take his Warlord trait. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, it's as simple as that. I am going to take a chaplain on a bike, and that will be our Primaris chaplain on a bike. Uh, he's coming in at 115 points. I'm going to make him the Master of Sanctity, so you can do multiple litanies. I am also going to give him a relic of the chapter. Uh, I think it's actually supposed to just be a relic, uh, which is the Vox Spiritum, which basically makes his auras 9 inches. I'm going to give him Canticle of Hate, so that's plus 2 inches to charge and plus 3 inches to piling and consolidations. Uh, and I'm also going to give him Litany of Faith, so that would be protection against mortal wounds. Uh, again, that would be a 9 inch bubble of protection against mortal wounds. He is also giving his leadership aura of leadership 9 in that 9 inch bubble as well, uh, because he is a chaplain and, uh, uh, you know... Friendly units can use his leadership from the spiritual leadership, I guess just core, not everybody, but friendly core can use that and then we're going to give him a warlord trait and the warlord trait i am going to give him which i think is possibly the best warlord trait that, that exists in 9th edition which may very well be gone in 10th edition will be rights of war so basically everything within nine inches of him that is core or character will be obsec so we've got dante to lead our, our troops and we've got this primaris chaplain to buffer troops okay we might need a sanguinary priest we're going to come back to this Troop-wise, uh, we will go incursors with a mine, uh, so they can get a bit of charge protections, and infiltrators with the helix gauntlet, so they get a bit of durability. Now, we might tweak this when we get to the very end of the list. We'll see. For elites, I'm going to start with a three-man blade guard veteran squad, and I think the blade guard veteran squads is pretty interesting. With three-man, we can give the sergeant a neo volkite pistol. Uh, it's not really worth it if you have to pay five points because right now it's free. I'd totally do that. So we've got our blade guard, and this little three-man squad will be a bit more durable than like a regular five-man squad in that they've got better armor save, and they have an invulnerable save, and they're also a bit better against two wound uh, damage because they have three wounds per model. We might try and put two blade guard veteran squads in here, or a six in combat squad them. I think. Going into 10th edition, Blade Guard are going to be very useful. I've been saying that a lot, and I am going to be running Blade Guard probably. I, I just, I'm about to finish painting my 8th Blade Guard, but I, I think I want to get a couple more. Um, Alright, what's next? I think what's next 
is Death Company. And Death Company with Jump Pack. So that'll be Firstborn Death Company. And we're going to take two squads of these guys because they're just that good. We're going to put Jump Packs onto both squads. One squad is going to run nobody with Chainsaw and Bolt Pistol, but five with Thunder Hammers. Um, and the other squad is going to run nobody with Chainsaw and Bolt Pistols. Uh, but we're going to run five. One, two, three, four, five. And annoyingly, you can't quickly do this, but we're going to put Infernal Pistols and Power Swords on all of them. So basically, it gives us two options for Fallen Fury. One is just like 20 attacks with Thunder Hammers. One is like, I guess it would be 20 attacks with Power Swords, but five Infernal Pistols. So if we give these guys Chapter Master rerolls from Dante uh, and then jump forward, both squads have quite a lot of kill potential, different different squads have different levels of kill potential. For example, your death company with infernal pistols could jump in and maybe blow up a transport and then kill what's inside with the power swords. The thunder hammer guys could go over something really tough. You could have one less thunder hammer to save 10 points on that squad and potentially have a sanguary priest to get them an assault doctrine and we might come back to that. Now, I am running Sanguary Guard at the moment, and I do like Sanguary Guard, so I'm going to run five, and I'm going to put Infernal Pistols on all of them, because that is, I think, much better. My Angelus Bolt Guns never seem to do much for me, so five Infernal Pistols on a squad of Sanguary Guard I like. And then in my current list with Gilliman, I've been having a lot of fun with uh, Tarak Siege Drill. So let's get that Siege Drill into the mix. Um, it's a dedicated transport. Uh, here we go. Um, it is going to have heavy flamers on it because I'm trying to try and keep the points cost down. It's deadly in melee. And it has uh, basically heavy five Meltha rifle on it. Uh, I think it's called uh, Meltha Cutter. And it's heavy five, yeah. And remember in melee, it's going to be strength 14, minus four, D3 plus three, and D3 plus six against vehicles. So it's going to be very, very useful if it ever gets into melee and it is toughness 8 and 14 wounds what is really good right now to put inside that terax because the terax has five melta shots plus two heavy flamers it's a squad of stern guard uh, i've been running stern guard for a while now they are super cheap for what you get uh, so we'll take a stern guard veteran squad the way i am running mine is we're gonna have three guys with combi plasmas um so I oh, sorry, I have to unclick special issue bolt guns. So basically, there we go. Three guys with combi plasmas. Actually, though, uh, that would be the sergeant included. Uh, so the sergeant um, is going to have a combi plasma and a power fist, because a power fist is free. So why would we not take that? It's pretty cool. Um, okay. Uh, and then within the Stern Guard squad, you're actually allowed two uh, special weapons. Um, let me just tweak this. Uh, so this would be a combi plasma, combi plasma, and our two special weapons. Do I have to do something here? Yeah, two you can have with heavy weapons. So let me remove two of the regular guys. Uh, remove, remove. Um, have I done this wrong? No, nope, hopefully not. So heavy weapon one will be a free multi melta. You have to pay multi points for multi melters in just about every other squad at the moment, but with Stern Guard they're free. So we'll get two guys with multi melters. We'll get the sergeant with a combi plasma and the power fist. We'll get one guy with a combi plasma and we'll get another guy with a combi plasma. So what this basically gives you for 100 points is four multi melter shots. Bear in mind these guys are going inside the Terax. So the Terax, when the Terax deploys from from reserve in turn two, usually you would bring it in turn two, you're going to get nine Melta shots. Um, if you include the heavy five from the from the Termite, you're also then going to get two heavy flamers from the Terax, and then you're going to be able to rapid fire, hopefully if you deploy within rapid fire range from those plasmas, you're going to be able to shoot six rapid fire plasmas, potentially on high power if you pl place your Terax within a good area close to Dante, so you can reroll the ones, or you just have to shoot in low power. Remember, you can rapid fire the bolters that these guys have as well. Um, and yeah, that's, um, that's pretty cool, right? Now, the next thing you can do, which is pretty cool, is put a firstborn tech marine inside the Terax, and uh, I'm gonna do that as well. Uh, so this is where my, this is where coming back 
I think it's good to have five Thunder Hammers in this Death Company squad because I don't have a way of getting them an Assault Doctor in without paying two CP. You don't always want to have to pay two CP for the Forlorn Fury. So if I can get away with not having to pay two CP and I've just paid 10 points extra to have that fifth Thunder Hammer, I think it can be worth it, right? So in that case, let's go back and let's take the Firstborn Tech Marine because uh, he goes inside of Terax. Who knows what will go inside of Terax in the new edition? Hopefully Blade Guard. Uh, but anyway, we get our firstborn Tech Marine inside the Terax. He gets a Servo Arm for free. Um, we're going to give him a Relic of the Chapter, which is going to be Icon of the Angel, uh, wherever that may be in this list. So that is all Blood Angels can reroll charges within six. So the Stern Guard can reroll, the Tech Marine himself can reroll, and the Terax can, can reroll. Uh, so when we do cast Canticle of Hate from. Um, a Primaris Chaplain, assuming we bring down the Stern Guard and the Tech Marine within range of the Chaplain's 9-inch bubble, we're going to be able to reroll both our charges and get plus 2 to both of their charges for the Canticle of Hate, and then we're also going to be able to reroll the Terex's charge. The Terex will have to make the charge on an 8 because he's only going to get plus 1 because he's not core, but still, it's a free reroll and a charge on 3 units Potentially you might bring down another unit to these guys, or you can bring down the Tech Marine pretty cleverly and maybe get some rerolls uh, elsewhere as well. Okay, so let's um, talk about the Tech Marine's weapons. He can take a Combi Melter, and that will be free. So that gives us 10 Melter shots now. He can also take his um, Servo Harness, uh, which is free. The Servo Harness includes... The plasma cutter, which can be supercharged, so you get a seventh plasma shot. Uh, it includes a servo arm, so basically he can make an extra attack, which is basically a thunder hammer if you think the servo arm, but without the minus one to hit, the tech marine hits on threes, so it's kind of the same. Um, and it also includes another flamer. Uh, so what else can the tech marine take? I believe he is allowed to also... He's obviously got his axe, he's got his meltler, um, but I believe he is allowed, um, is it here? I thought he was allowed a, s maybe Battle Scribe doesn't have it. I believe in the rules as it stands, he's allowed both the servo arm and the servo harness. Now I'm not seeing the other option. Maybe just check that, uh, but I believe he is allowed both. Uh, I guess Battle Scribe hasn't picked it up. And this is the thing about Battle Scribe, it isn't always 100% accurate. Um, so maybe just make sure of that. So we're at 140, sorry, 1,425 points. The Tech Marine also means that if the Terax doesn't die, then he's making that Terax plus one to hit, meaning the five Melter shots on the Terax suddenly become hitting on twos. The Terax does move eight inches, so it's got like a 20 inch threat range. And if it's got a bunch of multi melt or not multi melters, but a bunch of Melter shots hitting on twos, that's pretty useful, especially with how deadly it is when it charges. Right. I've also been fielding the Gladiator Reaper recently. Um, I think you could also maybe field double Baal Predator if you wanted, but the Gladiator Reaper right now gets the Heavy Stubber, the Rocket Pod, the Auto Launchers, it's all for free, and it's coming in at 150 points. It's fine, it's cool, it's decent. Um, like I said, Baal Predators could do the same, but this will this will totally wax enemy infantry. Uh, I've had good success with it against World Eaters, and generally it's just a useful tank to have. Um, the strength 6 on the main cannon, uh, which is 24 shots, means against toughness 3 infantry, wound on 2s. You can do a lot of damage with the Gladiator Reaper. Again, bonus points if you can ever get it near the Tech Marine. Uh, so what else do we need in this list? Well, I like to run a Whirlwind because I like the ability to make my enemy fight last and or disable Overwatch, so I will run... The Chill Whirlwind with a Castle and Launcher. We'll throw a Stormbolter on there for free, essentially. And that's just about it. So at this point, this was the list that I was running with Gilliman. You notice that there's 300 points left. Uh, Gilliman would ov obviously fit in those 300 points. The difference is we've taken Gilliman. We've dropped our Chapter Master on a bike that I've been running for 145 points. We've brought in a Primaris Chapel on a bike for 10 points less, but with better auras. We've brought in Dante, because I really want to feel them, even if his 9th edition rules aren't as good as I wanted. So the last two units that I was fielding with my Gilliman list would have been a Terminator squad, and this would have been a Thunderhammer Stormshield Terminator squad. And the moment this list has 4 CP, 
Uh, and what I'd found has been pretty cool with my Terminator squad was um, I was actually running this a little bit different. Let me add it. I was giving the sergeant... Um, sorry, this is a Terminator squad with guns. Uh, let's remove that. Close combat Terminator squad. Uh, I was giving the sergeant the lightning claws, and I was mastercrafting one of them, which means when the sergeant fights, assuming he's been charged or is charged, he has three attack space, plus two from lightning claws, plus two from charge, so he can make seven attacks, six of which he can make on that mastercrafted lightning claw, one of which he will make on um, a regular lightning claw. Then the other four guys are my Thunderhammer Storm Shield guys, meaning that I'm taking all the damage on those guys. They've got really good armor saves. They essentially have like a one-up save because they're a two-up save. The Storm Shield giving them a one-up save. If they're in cover, maybe they're on a zero-up save. Um, so if these guys are ever in cover, they need to be hit with minus two just to be on twos, minus three to be on threes. They are very durable. So this was my list. Basically, Gilliman was here. Now the difference is... By removing Gilliman, I have 135 points. There is a little advantage that Gilliman has over this list in that Gilliman's aura is a little bit bigger than the Primarch Chaplain on the bike, and Gilliman's aura also gives the Terax plus one to charge. So I guess in this case, the Terax will not have plus one to charge, and the Gladiator Reaper will not have plus one to hit. So based on this, uh, or reroll ones to hit, which was nice on the Gladiator Reaper as well, I could basically be on board here with, I, I talked about it before, adding a five, uh, making this a six man squad of Blade Guard, because that, that was my six elite choices, and then basically combat squatting. That I feel like would be totally viable. The other thing I think might totally be viable is to remove the Gladiator Reaper, as cool as it is and as much as I like it, and add two Ball Predators. Uh, because when I ran one Ball Predator, it didn't feel like enough, but when I ran two Ball Predators, uh, I actually felt really good um, I only ran it a couple of times. I ran it with the Heavy Bolter and the Twin Assault Cannon on both. They obviously get a free Storm Bolter, a free Hunter Killer Missile, so you should take those things as well. So what you would get then is you get two Twin Assault Cannons, so that would give you like 24 shots, strength 6, minus 1. You would get 12 Heavy Bolter shots, so that's strength 5, minus 1, 2 damage. Then you get the Storm Bolter, then you get the Hunter Killer Missile. And at this point, I have like... 65 points left over to play with well there is not a whole lot of things we can do with 65 points but we do not have any fast attack in this list so that's where i jump into i would say a land speeder with a multi melter right now would be very useful it's it's kind of a go-to unit for many a many a marine list uh that would be 60 points uh I think that's about the only thing you can do. I can't think of anything Marines can do with an extra five points here. Um, yeah, I mean, there's maybe we could put a power fist on one of these uh, Death Company. Uh, I think it would be sort of small. And I think I prefer running two Ball Predators over the single Reaper if there's no buffs to be had, right? Because, like, the thing about the Reaper that works quite well is you keep it next to Gilliman, you reroll the ones. If you've got two Ball Predators, it doesn't really matter where they are. It's two distractions. They have fairly decent range on those um, heavy bolters. Uh, the, the assault cannons are kind of useful. Uh, and this list could easily be changed. Like, we could easily drop... Like one, we could drop the squad of Terminators. We could bring in more Sangry Guard. Uh, if you don't like the Land Speeder, you could definitely bump up more Sangry Guard. Like we could, we could probably go like, if we drop the Terminators and that Land Speeder, that would we would basically have and, and the five points we have free, we'd have two hundred and thirty points. So we could basically do two six man squad of Sangry Guard in here instead. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, it would definitely be more mobile. It would still have like a bit of durability in that we've still got Blayguard veterans. Uh, we've still got a couple of ball predators. We've still got a Terax on the Alpha Strike. Um, so yeah, both of these would be cool. Do you know what? Maybe that's what I will run. I haven't run two squads of Sangry Guard for a while. And I've, I've seen some people get on pretty well with four jump units. Even though I said to myself, like, I feel like Blood Angels need a little bit more durability in the current meta, and that's why I'm running the Terminator squad. Let's go back. Let's go back to where it used to be. So let's... I guess the reason that I like that, actually, though, is I don't have 12 Sangry Guard with Infernal Pistols. I guess if you've got 12 Sangry Guard all loaded out with Infernal Pistols, that would be the better option. Um, 
maybe I'll proxy some infernal pistols this week. But yeah, so I would I would move this to a six man sangry guard. They would be all infernal pistols. I would add another sangry guard, uh, and they would all be infernal pistols. Let me add two more here, uh, and then. And then at that point we would have trouble because we would have 20 points left over and with marines right now it's actually very difficult to spend those last 20 points um it is i mean i'm 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 at a loss i don't know how you would actually spend 20 points i guess we would lose the incursor squad and we would replace them with infiltrators i guess that just gives us more board control in terms of like um and more survivability with the helix gauntlet we lose a little bit of damage output potentially um and yeah, I, there's there's no real way for us to spend those last 10 points. Oh, I guess we could put Volkite Chargers on the Terax. There you go. I think having the Heavy Flamers on the Terax is pretty useful. It's basically 2d6, strength 5, auto hits. The Volkite Chargers are going to be Heavy 4, strength 5, no auto hits, but 6s are mortal, and it could do 2 damage. It's got longer range. Um, I actually think the Heavy Flamers are fine here. Um... But yeah, I guess the Volkite charges, if for some miracle the Tarak survives through a single turn, then it get essentially, I guess, what you could do is you could shoot. Um, if it survives through a single turn, you could shoot with your plus one to hit. You'd have heavy eight hitting on twos. You're probably going to make some hits at that point, get some mortals, do some damage from weight of fire. Uh, so this is probably the list that I'm running on, going to run on the channel. And um, it's right at the end. It's right at the end of ninth edition, so I don't know... Uh, how much more time we will have to experiment with 9th edition lists, but I wanted to run a Dante list. I'm not going to another tournament 9th edition. Next tournament I'm going to will be 10th, and I'll be looking forward to running Dante in 10th 100%. Alright, I hope that was an informative way of looking at a list in Battlescribe and seeing how I sort of piece all the things together. Once you've been using Battlescribe for a while, you can get very seamless with it. I hope this video felt seamless. That's the sort of goal I was aiming for. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video, guys. And thank you to everyone that supported the channel all the way through 9th edition. This channel actually started just a few weeks after 9th edition. And we are now going to be going into 10th edition, probably with somewhere in the region of 12,500 subscribers. It means so much to me. I really do appreciate all your support. Um, I hope you consider liking this video. And make sure you subscribe because we have new Blood Angels content out every week. I have been John, the Blood Angels Commander, and I will catch you in the next video. By the blood are we made strong, my friends. Peace.